Hallelujah. God's time is the best. I say God's time is the best. Your time is not the best. But God's time. I know what your time is saying. But God's time is the best. You have it on the table. A lifestyle that is on purpose. A lifestyle that is on purpose. That is a... I think you must have had this on the table. Be was at home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you enjoying the message from the wise men there. Wonderful. Wonderful. It's all about power, 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 glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. So if I may just remind you in a moment that what the message was telling you. Hallelujah. Mm, let's just look at the Bible for two to three minutes before we listen to the testimony of our people. Hallelujah. Let's take our look at the book of Hebrew. Hebrew. Hebrew 11. Let's look at the book, verse uh, 6 there. Hebrew 11. The book of Hebrew. Hallelujah. Hebrew 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. That is to please God. For he who come to God must believe Take note of that. He who come, they are talking to you. The, the Bible here is talking to you. It says, he who come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hmm. Are, are, you, are, you, are you with me there? He said, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who come to God must believe that he is that he is a rewarder. Check out of that still and underline that. Wonderful. I like that. He who come to God must believe that he is and he is a rewarder. So it's to give you answer. It's to give you a solution and the reward. Hallelujah. By faith. Let someone say speak faith. I can hear you. I can hear you. That is speak faith. That's what, what the wise man was telling us there is it's just so simple. Faith first, that is, faith must first be in the heart before there can be an acceptance confession. Are you with me? Faith must what? Faith must first be in the heart before there can be an acceptance confession. That is, faith must first be, must first be in the heart before you can say, in the name of Jesus be healed. In the name of Jesus be delivered. In Jesus' name, amen. If you hear someone who is saying that genuinely, he or she must first have faith. Must first be in the heart. 
before he or she can say, in the name of Jesus Christ. If not, you are only calling the name in vain. If not, you are calling the name, you are only calling the name in what? In vain. And uh, you remember what the Bible says, you shall not call the name of the Lord in vain. And uh, many times we talk about the issue of faith in that book of Romans 10, verse 8 to 10. Issue of faith in that book of Romans 10, verse 8 to 10. The word, the word of faith is in two places. The word of faith is in two places. In our heart to believe. And in our mouth to confess. What does this mean? This means confession is part of salvation just as believing is part of salvation. Can you see why faith must first be in the heart? before there can be an acceptance confession. In that book of Romans 6 verse 2, our words determine the life we enjoy. The reason is that your mouth is Rwanda. Revealer of the belief in your heart. Are you with me? Your mouth is what? Rwanda. I mean, revealer of the belief in your heart. If I'm standing here telling you in the name of Jesus Christ, whereas there is no such in heart, whatever I call that name I'm, is in vain. I'm standing here and say, in Jesus' name, whereas in my heart, not such. Be he in my heart, not such. I'm deceiving myself. Oftentimes, I will face destruction. Are you with me? Can you see where our problem is coming from? The church people today, these are the challenges we are having. You see, ah, this man is a church man, he's a pastor, is this, is that. Well, it's a name. To be a pastor is a name, it's a honor, it's a honor. It's a degree, it's a, you can bear that name, you can decide to be a pastor, prophet, believers, Bishop, whatever, that's all. God has his own name. God has his own standard. Okay? So, now, the way you speak determines the life you enjoy. The reason is that the mouth is the rewinder, the revealer of the belief in our heart. You know, I stand here and say, be delivered in Jesus' name, whereas I'm not connected to God, the del deliverer. I say, be delivered in Jesus' name, whereas I'm not connected to deliverer. I'm deceiving myself. Often time, I will face destruction. My word will remain idols, meaningless. Many times the word will remain idols, oftentimes meaningless, 
many times like several sons of Skeba, destructive. The he, and I'm not connected to the healer, who will now he? But let's take it again back to that one. Look at what the healer is saying here. The deliverer is saying, the deliverer is saying here that without faith, it is impossible to please me. Tell your neighbor, the deliverer, the healer, is saying here, without faith, it is impossible to please him. That is what the deliverer is saying. And who is the deliverer? Jesus Christ. Who is the healer? Who is the provider? So that is, you are, that is why you are here. You are here to meet the deliverer, the healer. But the deliverer is saying here, it is impossible to please me, oh. It is impossible to, to hear me, oh. It is impossible, it is impossible. Not, it is not possible at all. So, now, faith, like I have said, must first be in the heart before there can be an acceptance, an acceptance confession, an acceptance talk, an acceptance look at him, an acceptance Faith must first be in the heart. This means faith is of man's heart. Faith is of man's spirit. Remember in, in the scripture, heart and faith, I mean heart and spirit is one, is the same. When, when you refer to heart, you are referring to spirit. We are not talking about biology, science. In science, it's a different thing. Science is a different thing. When you say heart, spirit, it's a different thing. But here, I come back home. Things of the spirit. Heart, spirit. Are you with me? Yes. It is impossible. Now I want to leave you here. Let him just put it this way. If you examine your life, you will find out how much faith you have. Tell your neighbor. I can hear you. What do I mean? If you examine your life, you will find out how much you please God. Tell your neighbor again. Look at me. Look at me. I'm going. Where am I going? If I examine my life, faith is manifested in the small thing in our lives. In my walking. If I examine my life, I will know how much faith I have in my walking. How much I Places God in my working. Where am I going? Am I going to go? If you examine your life, you will find out how much faith you have in your talking, in your looking, in your dress, in your sitting, in your chat with people. Just name them. If you examine your life, examine your life. As long as you have faith, you have God. Am I talking to you? Yes. Take this way. If you examine your life, you will find out how much faith you have. In your talking, Faith manifested in the small thing 
as you are looking at me. How much faith you can find out. If you have that absolute faith, you will know who is talking here. But with that faith, you will still see that boy called T.B. Joshua. That boy called T.B. Joshua. That looked like your, your staff in your working place. You know, your staff could be this, could be cleaner, could be any just mention you employ people. You, know, you just look at it and say, it looks like uh, this a guy that uh, used to, it looks like, yes. You, without fear, you, you begin to trace this boy where he is coming from. His biological background. His brother, his sister. Look at him. I mean, is that not the guy? So if you examine your life, you will find out how much faith you have. In your looking, how much faith you have. Without faith, you can't see anything. You only hear me talking. You only hear me talking. But you will not know how, how what, by what authority I'm talking. You will not know. You just see me as a philosopher. Uh, a teacher, teacher of the Lord, uh, one of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And you begin to examine the content of my language. You will not even look at the content, but you begin to examine the grammatical aspect of it, the accent and the structure of the, of the grammar. The graphic looking cannot give you the result, the, the real picture. Tell your neighbor, the graphic looking. You know what I mean? Graphic picture. Say graphic picture. Mm -hmm. Just graphic picture will not take you to where I want to take you to. I want to take you far. Connect. This is what the wise man was telling you. Speaks faith. Thank you. <laughs> Let's just hear from one or two. Don't don't forget the summary of what you have received just in a few in a few moments. That Timmy Joshua is telling you that you, when you look, when you examine your life you will find out how much faith you have. That is, how much you please God. How much I please God in my looking. How much I please God in my talk, in my walking, in my dress. You know how much you please God. T take time to examine your life. The deliverer, the healer, the protector, He's saying, without fear, you cannot please me. So, let's hear. So, we... So we, the reason why we have to take you back, last Sunday, we are in assembly here, last week, Sunday. What happened in the, in the last Sunday assembly? So you need to know, we have thousand, we just show you two, just only two, so that you can, you will now begin to look at what is going to happen today. You say, we all say, thank you God for last week, before we start asking for the, this week. Okay? That is just it. We can't just jump in and begin to pray for people without examining those who came last Sunday, what happened to them during the prayer, so before we begin to ask for. So that is it's a way of appreciation. That is my, my habit, the habit I cultivate. And uh, that is my own habit. Your own habit may be quite different, 
maybe you sing, you praise God, praise God, carry money, and they're dancing in front of the church, and people queue and say, Oh, Sana, Oh, Sana. Everybody will come and roll and roll and roll and drop. Man, TV Joshua will stand here, you put money in his shoe, he will do like this. <laughs> no, there's nothing bad. Not that I'm not trying to make him mockery. Rather, I'm telling you, this is my own way of saying thank you. David too has his own way. Every man of God, they have a way. I mean, they, they cultivate a habit of way of saying thank you, Lord. This is my own way of saying thank you, Lord. Okay? If I now stand here and say, you begin to put money in my shoe, it will take so much time, it will, it will consume our time. And that may not even take you to the faith. I mean, take you to, to where I want to take you to. Okay? There's nothing bad putting money in there. Okay, come and put money in my shoe. <laughs> okay, help me give it to the needy. Tell your neighbor, help me give it to the needy. It's the same, it's as good as putting money in my shoe. Tell your neighbor. Take it, take it to the needy. Take it to the, those who are their need. Tell your neighbor. I can't hear you. Please, do this. Instead of me to take it, if you do it, it's as good as putting the same shoe, the same money in my shoe here. So that's it. You are helping me. Please, help me take it to the needy. So it's our way of say thank you, Jesus. And uh, if you are expecting us to call time for Thanksgiving and we are not calling it, please don't forget if you keep the money in your pocket, it's no good. Give it to the needy. So you want us to remind you, you know that it's a normal thing. That if man of God is not asking you money and you come to the church, he's telling you, take it to the needy. It's a way of telling you take it to the needy. If you don't take it to the needy, you keep that money to yourself. And say, the man of God, he doesn't have money. He doesn't, uh, you just go to church, everything free, free, free. Uh, and free, he has money, he, 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 he has you money. It's a way, it's his, his own habit of demanding. He's telling you, take it to the needy. If you don't take it to the needy, those who are their need, and you just say it's not asking you money. How many times they ask money here today? It's not even you see my you will never see me rise or raise up your thanksgiving. No. When it is time to do that, I disappear. And it has been my culture for a long time. You can't capture me there. I expect you to take it to those who are their need. There is nothing bad. If I don't ask you and you are not giving me, and you go home and you are not giving me, it's like you are robbing God. If you don't give it to those who are their need and you keep it to yourself, you are robbing God. It's, it will become a hindrance to your prayer. So I don't need to begin to tell you this. You should know. We too begin, we demonstrate it every day. Every day. Every nearly three times in a month, people come out, we give them scholarship, we give them. We are supposed to be doing the not in the service, in the congregation. But we are doing this so that you will see and you can copy way of living a good life. Simple. Are you with me? So this is just, and if you now give it to a pastor, a gift, offering, and you put it in their shoe, pastor too, they are taking it to the needy. And if they are not taking it to the needy, that is not your business. If you are not begin to trace them, whether they take it to the needy, oh, it's a punishment. So whatever you give to the ministers of God, you put it in their shoe, you give them, whether they take it to the needy or no, that is not your business. If you are now begin to find out how they use it, what they use it for, I think you are going too far. You may probably find yourself fighting God. Some of you will say, some of us will say, hey, the money I use, look at it, look at the pastor, he has buys this, he has buy a car, 
he has died it. That is our money. Oh. See, oh. see him. See him. He, every day he look fat. Eh? Look at his look at he look fat. Eh? Every day he travel every day. He go for shopping. He travel overseas for medical checkup. Eh? That's our money. Oh. Mm. Mm. I, I wish mm. I will not give money again. Mm. He cannot, mm, 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 mm. Those things is not right. You say you are giving it to God. <laughs> Leave the pastor and God. And if you are now taking your time to begin to compare Pastor T.B. Joshua to other pastor, Pastor Yinka to Pastor T.B. Joshua, Pastor Tunle to Pastor T.B. Joshua, eh, Pastor T.B. Joshua, this is how you do, Pastor Tunle, this is how you do, it's not right. We, every great man had their own habit of drinking. Habit is a gift. It's a gift of God. Are you with me? Yes. So that's it. That's an habit. That is his own habit. That is my own habit. If I'm not coming here to make money, 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 does not mean uh, I'm, I'm doing the right and the, the those who demand the money are doing wrong. If they demand money from you, they ask in the name of God you give them, definitely they should also spend it in the name of God. If anyone is not spending those money in the name of God, leave it for God. So let's let's see. This is our habit. Thank you. Like uh, this this person that want to share testimony now, in in a different style, in the Bible, what the man supposed to do is to carry thanksgiving. Everybody will run and join him. Dollar, pounds, naira inside the bowl. The so man of God too will dance. We carry the bow, we carry the bow, everybody will kill, everybody will kill. Open me, go into, but Jojo Mandi, you're my dupe. And you got a lot of love. Thank you, Jesus. They'll drop it in. Wow. God does not want me to talk about that again. That's it. Shut up. Now, this we now this money we now take it needy the right use of it because it's for God. That's it. But our own, if I now decided not to call the man to carry board and carry money, I'm still speaking the same language. I'm telling him that money you are supposed to bring and the people are supposed to join you to contribute, please. Take it to the needy. They are needy. Help the needy. Help the community around you. You will go farther than me. If everybody go around the world to help the needy, you will do better than me in giving. Than me only do it. I remember the issue of the Philippian Philippines in the country. We say everybody should go to the embassy. People send in me, there's no embassy in their country, there's no embassy, there are some country they have embassy. I say, if there's no embassy in their country, now, there are people around you, around you, maybe people around you, community that has also in their name like Philippines at the same time. If there's no embassy of Philippines in your community, your country, and you have something to give them, what is happening in the Philippines? They are their need now. There are some people also in your country there that they are need. If you give these people, you are giving it to Philippines too. Amen. Every occasion, every occasion is like you try to get there, you could not get there. That money you have around you. Okay, twenty thousand dollar. You want to get there? You cannot fly there. You just think, where will I take it? They were saying we should put our back account. No, 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 no. You will do better. Around your community, your state, your country. There, if you go to some area in your country, there are some people too that 
are in their name, like Philippines. So if you give these people in your community, your country, it's like you travel to Philippines also. So I think I have answered the question. So those who have those money around them and they are thinking of how to send because if you try to send it, there are some different email addresses, telephone number on the on the internet. These calm men, criminal, they are using those I, I, I mean opportunity to do people. They say they are doing that, that don't mind them. If you can't get to the embassy and there's no way you could get to the Philippines and give them the gift. Wow. Your country there, look for those who are in their needs and give that. It is a contact. As you are giving, you say, I'm giving you this community this. You people to use it for this. God cannot reach Philippines, but I'm giving these people. Amen. So it's a contact. You are getting it. You are right. You have done it right. Are you with me? You have done the writing. That is writing. So therefore, that is a way of telling you, don't stop. Continue to help. What happened? Continue to help. So do that. So the money for our back account and our this, our that. No, no, no. You know, we will not be able to do as much as you wish. We can't reach as much as you reach. So do the right thing. Thank you very much. There is a woman there. Suddenly, this is stopped in the past, but it has started. You bedwetting. This is threatening your marriage, and you, because of this, you bed wetting, you wet bed anytime, you, you have trying to keep yourself, there's no way. You have using injection, there's nothing you have not done. This is an attack. So please come, you, it is there. You bed wet. Come on, come. Don't want to put an end to these challenges. And the woman he said bed wetting. I think this is day before yesterday. I say you bed wetting. Yes. Thanks. Thank you, Lord. You are free. Thank you. 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 Thank this time I finish the service, I will sit and watch the Imani TV. Do you know I, 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 I scream on the floor uh, just like you are? I say, hey, I say, where can you this? Can you get? So after the service, me too, I will go and sit down, lock myself, and I'll be watching Imani TV. I will say, hey, Kai. Just Kai, the woman fell down. If you say Kai, hey, my God, without fail, Kai, Kai cannot go anywhere. <laughs> huh? Can you see? So I just, with, with that provocation, because at that moment, I could not see the woman. I was looking at the Satan. I could not see the woman standing. I was looking at that demon that caused her to bed red. As if I true, oh no, Jesus, Jesus is merciful. As only you allow me, I'll be given carry to hell. <laughs> <laughs> you just see me sacrifice the courage. Because I see this demon. I see the demon. You you are looking at the woman standing, but at the time I say Kai, I was looking at the demon. I say, ah. Eh? You are the cause of the oh merciful God. You will just see me fighting karate, but uh, he only allow me to say Kai. <laughs> Without touching this woman, just that way. Look, my brother, let him let him share a word with you. You see, 
Okay, it's like I'm standing here. A big tiger, lion. Oh, just come inside. Ah. At that moment, the thing come instantly. What will come out of you? You will not know. It's now left for you, you and your belief. Whatever you say, you know I say, I say the way we speak, the timing, the life we enjoy. The reason is that our mouth is the rewinder, revealer of the belief in our heart. Whatever, what, what you speak, kai, reveal what is in my heart. Jesus. If it is demon inside, if I say kai, it's a demon that come out. Whatever you don't speak out like this. The way you speak, the timing, the life you enjoy, the reason is that the mouth is the rewinder, the revealer of the belief in your heart. If Jesus is not my heart, and I say Kai, what is the meaning of Kai? Is Kai now? Kai is Kai. <laughs> Tell me, you know what is happening to you in the dream? When these people come to attack you, you say, my honey, my honey, my honey, my honey. They begin to beat you. Which can honey? Which can honey? Honey. Honey this time, honey. Why they come to beat you? They say, hey, hey, hey. The more you hey, hey, the more they strangle your neck. And because there is nothing in your heart. Tell your neighbor. The way you speak. The timing, the line you enjoy. The reason is that. The mouth is the Rwanda, the revealer of the belief in your heart. Look, whatever you speak out, people, you see people, you see people. It is what is in your heart. See, people keep shouting the name Jesus and have no Jesus in their heart. If I'm talking, let me see you. Hey! See these people speaking in tongue. And this is demon language. Demon is in their heart. Look at the Bible. When you go to the butcher, they will never ask you whether you're a Christian or demon before they will sell you Bible. All what they need is money. If you just give them money, they give you Bible. your money, you ate a butcher, I want to buy Bible. They will not ask you, are you this, are you Christian, are you Muslim, are you this, are you that. Give them money, they'll give you Bible. I want to tell you today that 60% of the author of the Bible you are reading, 60% of them are mere philosophers, they are not Christian. They are philosophers, just historical. They are not Christian. They just write that Bible for money sake. For the sake of money. Story. They are not Christian. They have nothing to do with Christianity. They just write the Bible. But they, they are professor. They are they are deep, they have deep knowledge of religion. They write it to sell it and to get money out of it. Sixty percent of your Bible, many Bibles you carry today. You say Christianity. What is the percentage of Christianity in the whole Israel? The Muslim percentage is more than Christianity in Israel. Muslim percentage are more than Christianity in the whole Israel. But that is where we go for privilege. That is where we, we, we regard as holy place. Yes. Yes. 
only God know who is serving him. Only God knows man's heart. We listen to the confession of people. I'm a Christian. I'm a pastor. I'm a prophet. But only God knows who is real. Let's, let's, let's listen to Kai. <laughs> that is what came out of my mouth at, the, at that moment. When you look at me, anytime I want to pray, if you just hear different voice. Hey! Mm, hey! Mm, mm, hey! Mm. Me, I wash myself. When I look at TV Joshua, I will watch Prophet TV Joshua after the service. <laughs> the, the person that says Kai is Prophet. But I will sit down, I will laugh, I, will, I keep laughing about the Prophet. Sometimes when they say, ah, look at this man, I call him this man. <laughs> so people sitting around me will say, ah. What's wrong with this man? Chibi is the same person. Say, look at this man, look at this man. Ah, this man, this man. Ah. I started laughing about this man again, this man. Let's watch, thank you. People of God, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. My name is Sammy Sisukiru Pepe Shago. I came from Patakot. Last week, Thursday, I was in the dream. I had a dream when my son was making love to me. In that dream, I, I bedwetted. Your, your son? Yes. Your own biological son? Yes. Was making love with you? Yes, sir. Okay, after the dream, uh -huh. listen, it is a real life. What is happening? Listen to the... You are not just here to see happen, but you want to listen to people. Many of you have similar dream, but you may not know the meaning. Let's watch. Uh -huh. Start again. In that dream, I saw my son making love to me, my 22 years son. And now, sometimes, so people that I know will use the face to come and make love to me. I will be drunk. That Thursday, and I called my husband and I said, See the dream I had last night. My husband and I said, What kind of nonsense is this? I called my younger sister in Abuja for my sister. My sister drew my heart again. For my said, this is a bad spirit. So on Sunday, I came to church. I was around a man of God who was prophesying, say, there's a woman up there that you are bedwetting. I was like saying, Shay, how will I come out? The whole people will see me, I know that I'm bedwetting. And I called my husband and said, see, oh, man of God is so Because him too is watching the Emmanuel television in the house. He said, come out. I said, I'm not coming. Some women around there said, go now. Since this thing is for you, go. I said, I'm not going. My husband now called me the last one. He said, if you don't come out, so you'll be delivered. Don't come back to this house. And I ran out. That was how I came out. But since that day, till now, after the deliverance, I have not been waited. Mm -hmm. You listen to that? So he doesn't want to lose the husband. Can you imagine that? The husband calls if you don't come out. Imagine. I mean, so that's it. So that's it. Okay, what happened when, when I shout on you? I shouted on you here and you, without touching you, and you fell down. What happened? I didn't know what happened, not until I gave home. I was asking my husband what happened. He yes. was telling me. What the husband, the husband was telling you? He said that man of God, the bride and this hand, you fell down. I, I do what? Why? I'm not saying why, I say child. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that? The husband has given another meaning. He said, say. <laughs> so your husband say what? Say it again. <laughs> my husband said, I asked him, what, did, what happened to me? He said, one, one man of God, he said, Kai, 
you fell down. <laughs> So can you see, the foolish demon that tormented her immediately. Because there is no way you can deliver somebody when you don't know what you are going to deliver him of. It's not possible. Deliverance, healing, when you see people that say, him and you are him, mean God reveal to him the challenges you are having. So it's different from practicing healing. You can practice healing by saying in the name of Jesus be healed because you see people also practicing healing. We do practice in it, yes. One live a righteous life by practice. By practice you can live a righteous, you begin to live a righteous life. But that righteous life will face a lot of challenges. Tell your neighbor it will face a lot of challenges. So you can live by by practice the name Jesus, by practice the right. Mm, it will face a lot of challenges until it become an integral part. So because anything you practice become hobby. If I'm talking to you, anything you practice it become hobby. Hobby means game. So like you want to play football, you want to go for free, no matter how good you are as a good footballer, you must practice, you must exercise, you must practice before you go to the field and play. And hobby, challenge can mess up hobby. Challenge can stop hobby. Your hobby. Many of you that some hobby you are using you are a footballer, you are a, I mean, table tennis, you, are what you, you have a game you play, but you face a challenge, maybe you are there, you have dislocation, or you are being operated, or you have headache, constant headache, those challenges will stop you. You will not be able to go on for that game again. But <laughs> nothing and nothing can stop our belief. Once you believe, you believe. Are you, are you with me? Yes. So because it's not hobby. We have no alternative. But there's alternative for hobby. We love the basketball. When you see you cannot go for it, you choose another one. But there's no alternative for our feet. So I want to congratulate you and uh, to let you know that uh, you have to stand up for Jesus. Okay? In the, like we, we, you we all know that miracle is not an end but the means. Okay? But the means. Are you with me? So it's trying to tell you have a good life to live for God. Now you have, you have, you have that peace now. What is threatening your salvation has been removed. What else again? If what is threatening your salvation? You say salvation, I have salvation, I'm born again, but you're bedwetting. You will sit down and say, ah, I'm a born again, why to like bed wetting? But if that is removed, what is again? Because you are bed wetting, does not mean you are not a believer. Tell your neighbor. Because you are bed wetting, does not mean you are not a believer. That bed wetting is only threatening your salvation. But when the threat is removed, you have comfort more to serve the God. A woman may be dead wet, yet be a friend of God. A man may be sick in body, yet be a friend of God. A man may be poor, yet be a friend of God. But if that threat is removed, you have more peace and comfort to serve him. But because you have a challenge, you have that challenge, that's not me, you are an, an, an unbeliever. Tell your neighbor that you have that challenge. That's not me. That you are an unbeliever. Take note of that. That you have that challenge. That you are buried. That you are buried. That you are poor. That you are sick. That you are bedwetting. 
I don't know what your name does not mean that you are a non-believer. But if that channel is removed, my brother, you have peace, more peace to serve him. But that does not make you a non-believer. Because we have a lot of wrong doctrine, wrong teaching. People die silently every day today, my brother. I, I, that something happened, I, 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 I read something uh, on the internet, on the, it was painted of a pastor, and I say, rest in peace, God, God Almighty should give him a, a bosom body, a bosom peace to rest. I, I learned it was uh, just preaching to the congregation. It's on the internet, everybody have read it, I know you know what person I'm talking about. It's a pastor, the whole church. He was preaching to the congregation and said, Oh yes, I'm telling you, oh yes, uh, I realized that God, did, God could not hear me, I'm sick. God could not hear me, I'm sick. God could not give me peace, I'm sick. He was telling the congregation like that. I watched the video and said, ah. Could you believe he has two services? The second service, that is the first service he was telling the congregation that uh, yeah, I'm sick, I've been mean, depressed, but I, could, I asked God to heal me, but God could not heal me. I have this, God could not heal me. That's the first service. After the first service, he went. The second service, the congregation were waiting. Could not know that the man carried God and shot himself. A, a pastor. He shot himself and he fell down in the pool of blood there. And the congregation were dancing, oh son, oh son, waiting for pastor to come for second service. When they could not see pastor after one hour, two hours, they now went to let us go and know the door. What, pastor, are you sleeping? They saw pastor right at the pool of blood. Now congregation, they now play back the, what he was saying. The first time is that, uh, hey, uh, I was sick, God could not heal me, I was this, this God could not receive healing. He still believed that God, he still praising God, but he was complaining, he was saying, he was saying he had depression, he had this, he could not heal. They were playing by all the congregation at the first time, was saying, ah, he was saying this, he was saying this. This, what are the cause of this? I'm sorry to say this. Many of us, we, we give a very wrong teaching. Look, that you are saved does not mean, and does, that does not make you an unbeliever. Personally, I listen to the teaching every day on the many medium, media, and other. A lot of teaching are disagree with this. When we know that a man can be poor and yet be a, a friend of God, there will be a limit in preaching the prosperity we are preaching. Limit to that. Salvation will be more. The teaching of prosperity will be played down little. If I'm talking. It will be played down. Prosperity teaching will be played down. Because when we begin to preach this prosperity to our member, our congregation, to them, they believe that when they are poor, they are not a Christian. You must be rich. You must be rich and have money. That's not it. Yes, it's a blessing of God to be rich. But that you are poor, that does not make you a non-believer. A man may be poor, yet be a friend of God. That poverty is mere challenge. If that poverty is removed, you have comfort to serve God. No doubt about that. But that does not make you. There could be many reasons. If God knows that you are going too far, your prosperity is taking you far, that could be seized for him a while to strengthen your desire. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you, your, your message to the world.
So now, before this time, I can't go to people's house to pass the night. I stay in the hotel. But yesterday, since yesterday I came, I stepped to somebody's house. I didn't betray. I'm using this opportunity to tell people out there that are having the same problem. That if they have hope in God, they will be delivered as and delivered in Jesus' name. Can I ask? Can I ask you a question? I want you to please speak your mind because you are free now, so that other also will be saved out there. At the time you are bedwetting, okay. Were you a Christian born again? No, I'm not. Why? I'm not a born again. Which church are you going? Holy Ghost Deliverance Church in Patakot. Ah, uh, why you are not born again? Is that not born again church? Huh? Why you not listen to your pastor teaching? I have, but I've decided to make up. I've made up my mind to be a born again after the deliverance. Okay, because of your problem. Yes. Is it because of a problem you, you believe you are not born again? Because of the problems I've been having. I go to church, they don't tell me what is happening to me. Yeah, you say what? I go to church, they don't tell me exactly what is happening to me. But when I came here, I had a deliverance. Okay. I think uh, what he's trying to say is that uh, he has that, uh, he has been looking at God in a bad light because of a challenge. Are you with me? I say he looked at Jesus in a bad light because of the challenges she was having. Her going to church is like her husband forced her to go there. She cannot stay home, go, go to church. He has to go out and go to church. But her mind is not in the church. Even what they are preaching is not there. But you can hear God's way now. I can. Okay, can you tell the world that, that you have a challenge like bedwetter? Bedwetting, that does not make you a non-believer. You can still be born again at the same time having that challenge. Tell the whole world. It, they, they want to hear from you. People of God, man, because I am bedwetting does not make me an unbeliever. Okay. But now I am a believer. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, viewers at home, listen to my sister. My sister is saying that you are having a challenge. Challenge could be any, 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 any foolish thing. Foolish thing. That you are having cancer. There are many people in the hospital now as I'm talking. They may lie on the bed. They have been on the bed for many years. With cancer. That you are having cancer. That is the, that is the, the deadly sickness you can, you can talk of. Because cancer is a, is a killer. That you are having cancer does not make you an unbeliever. Because you are sitting down now at home because you have cancer. You refuse to go to church. You refuse to believe anything. You say you are an unbeliever. Because of that, Satan is now using that to push you to do, to think back, ungodly thought, fleshly laws, all sort of things. You condemn. You don't want to hear God. You don't want to. That does not make you a non-believer. Please. You may have cancer. A man may have cancer. Yet, be a friend of God. So please. Arise and serve your God. It's mere challenge. Whatever challenge you are having does not make you an unbeliever. That does not mean that Satan is not the architect of a foolish thing. I'm not saying Satan is not an architect. He's an architect. He's the author of all those foolish things. Well, that foolish thing at the same time can be also you to stop you a while as a child of God. You know, you are having a race to run, good race, but you are, you are running so fast, faster than your destiny. You know, one can run faster than his destiny. You know what I mean by destiny? Okay, that is your goal, your God. You run faster than your destiny. 
the foolish thing can only be used to stop you awake in order to prepare you or strengthen your desire or to refocus you to reposition you to prepare you so what has happened to you as a child of God if you are facing many challenges over there as a child of God is there to stop you a while to strengthen your desire it's not meant to kill you to destroy you even at the end of the day if you die it is not that challenge that kill you it is God's time So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Next. Pour entendre le témoignage de cette femme qui ne peut plus payer après la prophétie de l'homme de Dieu, la reçu sa délivrance. La prochaine vidéo est maintenant sur l'écran. Bon, vous savez, les petites vidéos. Je vais vous montrer. Comment vous êtes I hope if I talk to you, it will not be annoying. Yes, sir. You are here for deliverance. Yes, sir. Because you are a drunkard. Yes, sir. As beautiful as you are, each time you finish and people see you drunk, yes, they always pity you. Yes, sir. There was a time you are half naked. Yes, sir. They have to pull you from the gutter. Yes, sir. There was a time they abuse you when you, you take this. Yes, sir. He doesn't know that they abuse her. It was when he woke up, he saw spam in her body. Almost five people abuse her. It's a case. Look at it! In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are free. Vous voyez que cela est vrai, déclarez le vrai. Après, tu parles dans l'alcoolisme. Non, non, quoi, what you said is true. My only problem that I have is that when I drink, I always beat up my children. And yeah, when, always, you, when you drink, you always beat up your children. My children, yes, sir. And all the money that I always have, I will spend it all. Sometimes I will drink for one week, non-stop. I won't eat anything. Every day, I can smoke like four packets of, for, of cigarettes every day. Sometimes when I finish doing it, I will start regretting. I don't even know what gets me into that. It's either I'm too happy, I start, or I'm too sad. And lately, I've always wanted to commit suicide for no reason. say God is doing here? What can you say is happening here? Yeah, I know you, it's only clap in your answer. Anytime we ask you a question, you don't have anything to say. You are very good in there. What can we say? You know, so what shall we say? Oh, to the Lord. Oh, we are to say. that it happened to, they know what I'm talking about. A challenge, a trouble he has been having for many years. Yeah, he has spending a lot of money and from other country flying to Nigeria and nothing is collected and just kai. become a change of the past. 
Can you see why there's time for prophetic service? Because if not prophecy, it is hard to come out and say, this is the, my challenges. She will not talk. What she wants to do is to go to the prayer line and write deliverance. And the thing needs name to tackle it. You will just say deliver. And she may not be delivered. Because the Bible says, Confession is a part of salvation, just as believing is part of salvation. Talk is part of salvation, just as believing is part of salvation. If you don't talk, it may hinder your. Just like that. But when I was moving from one place to another, I said, Come on. I said, can I talk to you? I hope you will not feel embarrassed. I first of all say that. Because what I wanted to say was very embarrassing to you. He said, yes, you are here for deliverance. This is your challenge. This is your challenge. At that moment, at that spot, the job is half done. The job is what? Half done. That is 50%. He has cost 50% for that revelation to come. He has cost 50%. Now, remain 50% now. That they remain 50% to lay hand on her. 100% scored. So, if, it's, if she just go for laying a hand, she will have scored 50%. And the remain 50% problem will carry it home, which is confession. If you understand me, let us see your hand. Let's assume only just plank out to prayer line. Bah! It will score 50% and go home. Because her case needs votes to be set free. And why? So that other can learn. Because you learn now. And even what you say now, give you 50%. Give you 50% score. What you are hearing from her. A lot of things going on in your heart now. Ah! My problem will be solved. With this, I know God is at the top of my problem. Many are given time to God that with what I have seen now, I know no problem. I just need laying her. You begin to establish that faith that, oh, Jesus is, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You need something to establish that. Hearing it from the pastor is not enough. You need something to establish your faith. Uh, that really, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. And you begin to see, all hand, all finger, point to that. That this is Jesus. Oh, Jesus is alive. Indeed, Jesus is alive. You may be seated. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Children of God, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. My name is Mrs. Sandra Shaw. And this man is my husband. And my two boys, my children. I want to thank God for my life and my family. It all started on Sunday when I came Sunday was my first time I have uh, been to synagogue before. I've never seen prophet before in my life. And when he was giving prophecy, he came to my seat and called me out. And he said to me, you are a drunkard. And I was shocked. I was, I was embarrassed. But something in me just said, you know why you came. I've been places that they have never ever told me. I'm a drunkard before. They have always said, you have a spiritual husband, and never, nobody have ever told me my problem, but me myself know my problem. So when the man of God said that, I said, thank you, Lord, in my heart, that this is my final bus stop. And I said, yes, sir. He now said, I hope you will not be offended. 
If I tell you your problem, I say, with all due respect, sir, please say it. Because no, everybody around the world, anybody, even people that is watching me know that the only problem I have is that I drink. So I'm not ashamed to say that I drink because I know that I've been praying for deliverance. So, man of God said, even you have drunk and see yourself in Igota and you, you, you have been abused, you didn't know. In my heart, I say yes, and in my heart, I know that worse that things like that have happened. I've drank and cooked poison to feed my kids. The only, prob the only thing that saved my kids was that day a friend of mine took them out and refused to, re um, to release them to me. And I abused her, I was turning her gate, was shaking her house. I said I would cause alarm. She wouldn't release them because if she had released them, they could have ate that poison and they could have died. Especially my first son. If I drink, I just hate him for no reason. I will beat him for like three days, injure him. I will carry knife, bottle, even my husband. I get sad. It all started after I had my second son, Daniel, 12 years ago. Out of a sudden, after like three weeks, I had my child. My husband bought me a new car and I had a party. After that party, that same day I had the party, the next day I had a dream. And in that dream, I was naked, wandering around the street, mad, mad. And I woke up, I didn't understand the dream and then I was not a Christian, I don't go to church. So I didn't take it as anything, I didn't even share the dream with anybody. I noticed that from the next day, I started bleeding. For one year, I saw my period non-stop. I went to the clinic, and they told me that it might be baby blues that is happening to me. Each day, I get sad. I, I, I drink that if you, if you come to my house, eight part of my house wardrobe, nobody knew that I, I was drinking secretly. In a day, I could consume like seven to eight packets of Rotmas, and I cannot smoke any other cigarette apart from Rotmas. It has to be Rotmas. And it's, each time I, I smoke and drink, something will tell me, just enter your car, drive out. I will drive out, I will drive, I don't know where I'm going, I don't even remember driving. Sometimes midnight, two o'clock, four o'clock, six o'clock, I will be driving. Sometimes I will wake up in the morning around 10, I will see myself in the steering, on unknown destination. Sometimes I will drive to the sea, to just enter the sea, but once I, I even in Ghana, I drove to close to the sea, and my car engine just ceased. It wouldn't start, and people just gathered. And 2009, does it mean when you are driving, you park in the midnight and sleep inside a vehicle? There. I don't even know that I'm driving. I don't know how the car will stop. I don't know where I am. And you will sleep inside it there. Yes, sir. And people who will now come and wake you up inside the vehicle? By the time people will wake me, they must have stolen my phones, my bag. They must have robbed everything in the car before I could woke up. In 2009, I had a fatal accident. Under six years, I've had eight fatal accidents that nearly took my life, but nothing happened to me. The airbag shot at me. That eight fatal accident, my car went beyond repair. The airbag all shot, but nothing happened to me. But 2009, I had a very fatal accident. That was why I went to live in Ghana, in Port Harcourt. That accident, the guy that was involved, I hit. They had to I, I protect his leg. And he was, I, 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 then my, me and my husband have already started having problems concerning the drinking. He wasn't happy with the marriage anymore and everything. And the family of the guy, they had to fly him out and I needed to pay money. I had to sell my, my land property to be able to, almost hundred and something thousand dollars, to be able to send the guy to the state for them to give him medical treatment. And sometimes when I drink, I always fight him. I always, like sometimes I would just pick up a phone and call his employee and started threatening them that they should sack him. If they don't sack him, I will kill them. I will start threatening them that I'm destroying the company house that they have given us. I will fight all the workers. 
then the next day they will call him they will say mr Shaw, we are happy with your working but we cannot take this our company is well respected we are sorry that we cannot employ you anymore we are sorry if you if you are if you want to work with us then we'll have to transfer you to a, a place where you will get far from this woman but as long as you are married to this woman you won't work with us and they will sack him for like every month he, he is always losing his job because of me and then he will still be with me he will not he has lost all his friends that he he knew since he came to this country 35 years ago he came to this country nobody talks to him nobody sits with him because he's still married with me they said i don't know why why you're still with this lady that always disgrace you each morning he works every month there was a time he's earning like 30 something thousand dollars he gives it to me i can't account for it every morning he has worked for the past 15 years we are married i always spend it not knowing what i use it in doing because of the alcohol the last sunday when the man of god <laughs> called me out and told me my problem since over 15 years i've been looking for solution I got tired of looking for solution and I told God when I came on Sunday when I was praying, I told God that I don't want to enter 2014 with this disease or I will kill myself. And I was praying, I fasted before I came. I said, God, this is my last bus stop and I thank God for answering my prayer because I didn't know that I would survive this year. I didn't want to enter the next day with this shame I told my God. <laughs> because everywhere I go, nobody wants to have anything to do with me. Nobody wants to sit with me. Everybody that I'm supposed to, that's supposed to respect me disrespect me because I'm an alcoholic. And I don't find joy in doing it. Sometimes I regret. I'm losing my children respect because of my character. <laughs> And I've tried to reprance for the past one week now, I've been in the presence of the Lord. I've never felt that pain in my heart, and I've never had the odds to drink or smoke. I bless God, I bless God. <laughs> Let's, to that. Let's just hear that part again. After your deliverance that Sunday, after that deliverance, the urge to smoke, to drink, Tell us, because it have every morning in, in a week, I noticed that in a week, the church I attend in Ghana, they do program on Tuesdays and Fridays and church program on Sunday. So I noticed that on Monday, on, on Monday I will drink so that Tuesday I can't go to church. Then I will drink Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday I will not drink. Early morning, three to two o'clock on Thursday morning, something will talk to me. Have a cigarette, have a drink. From one drink, it's as if something will just step out of me and something else will enter. I will drink Friday, Saturday, Sunday I can't go to church. It always happens. And in a, in a week, I will have three crises. And I might wake up too happy. Then I start drinking, I'll start playing music, or I might wake up too sad. The pain will be so much. Nothing anybody will do to please me. And the only people I want to hang around it is people that still drink. As long as you meant well for me, I don't want to be around you. But since Sunday deliverance, I dreamt in the night on Sunday night where I saw a man of God. The clothes man of God used in seeing me on Monday night was the clothes he was wearing on Sunday night when I dreamt. So I was climbing a step. As I was climbing the step, man of God was coming out. You know, I said, my daughter, keep climbing. Don't look back. Just keep going. Don't look back. Just go. And as I... So I, I woke up from that dream. Then I'm still in the camp here. And I said, go, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Because I've always heard that when man of God prophesies to you that there's a solution to your problem and when you see him in the dream, indeed you are healed. And I just said to myself, I even told the people that are around me, I said, I know that I'm healed. I feel free. So since that Monday, the pain, I'm scared I, to, to like go home or to like wake up in the morning. 
before that every time that is about to be morning I'm scared because I know that that pain comes with full force but for now since Monday I've not received any pain in my heart or the urge to drink I if each time I think of drinking or think of smoking it disgusts me listen to that very very irritating is there any time you think of just remember smoking say like shit. Very irritating. Say, so hate it. That is what the law wants now. To hate that thing. To hate it. That's all. Just mere cunning. Come, can I talk to you? Solve the problem. And he has spent a lot of money. You see the way she's crying. He said this thing has dishonored her. So what message do you have for the whole world? Before the chorus, I think of beautiful son you want to give us. Mm. Emmanuel. Who has all over the world. I want you guys to know that there is God. In any situation you are passing through, in anything you are passing through, just believe in God. Let no human being tell you, I will take you here, I will go out there, this place, I went to places, they said that if you drink the roots, that once you drink it, when you see alcohol, it will, you will throw up and everything. But to my greatest surprise, when I go to such places, my problem becomes worse than when it, how it was i want you to know that god is god and he will be the only one that will save you and whoever that is having problems that i'm having i know that i don't believe that anybody can face what i've faced for the past 12 years i want you to pick up courage to come down here because god is here i didn't believe that god is here when people say go to tb joshua i will tell them please don't even talk that because I don't want where I will go, they will cast one and put hundred. But when I came, since 12 years I've been looking for solution. This is the first man of God that has told me my problem and hit it where it's happening. And I bless God for his life and his family. Thank you, Jesus. I want you not to give up, pick up courage. I know when I was coming, the devil was telling me, if you go, you will die. I faced, I faced challenge. Even when I came that Sunday, I was sitting down. The thing was telling me, leave this place. But I told God that this is my final bus stop, that I will not enter this disease next year. It's a decision I make. So no matter what the devil is telling you, that he will kill you or anything, don't mind the devil. He's only fighting to be able to put you in bondage. Pick up courage and come. Even though you cannot afford to come, there are so many people that can assist you. If you want, I can assist you because if you look at me, you know that money is not my problem. The, to have money and be humiliated is the worst thing that can happen to you. There was a time I prayed to God, let me be poor, but let me have my peace. Right now, I have my peace, I have my joy, and I'm not ashamed to say it. I thank God oh, for my life. But I like that language. I want you to repeat that one again. That is, money is not a problem. He said there is everything. He has money. He has what it takes, money. Please repeat it again. Start from that. Tell those who believe so much in money. Much money, money. They believe so much in money. He said there was a time he was praying that money should go. And he want to have peace. Please start from the issue of money. Tell us. Because when my people hear money, they laugh. But when they hear other things, they clap. You see? Nobody clap when they hear money. <laughs> when they hear money, they laugh. If I want to make you laugh, we'll make your money. Please, start there. Mm -hmm. Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. Children of God, I want you to know that money is not the problem. Because if you look at me, you will know that I have it all, but I didn't have my peace. It got to a point I told God to make me poor, but let me have my peace. 
and now I can sleep, I can eat, I have my joy, I have my peace. And I thank God for his mercy. Thank you, Jesus. I want to ask you one question. That show what by what you are saying now, show that you really want to in the past, you really want to get out of the mess. You want to get out of the problem. It's like it was like you don't like that lie. But you don't know. You do not know how to get out of it. Tell us about that. Because there are some problems that you just you enjoy it. You want to continue. But the way we are seeing it is like a, you hate it, but you cannot help yourself. Why do you want to say about that? Yeah, man of God. For the past, let me say, eight years now, I've been living on my own. I, I'm not separated with my husband or divorced, but I chose to live on my own because I didn't want to cause him any pain or make him lose his job. Ever since I moved to Ghana, he has kept a steady job aside that when he was sick. And I had to bring my children to come and school in Nigeria when I'm, I'm in Ghana so that they can be in body school. And after like weekend, they come home to be with their dad. Because I'm the, I see myself, I'm the problem. The whole place is happy. Once ever I come in, everybody is scared. My first son doesn't even eat. He doesn't have appetite in eating because once he just see me. It's not that he doesn't love me because he's scared. He knows that every two, two days I will have crisis. And when I have crisis, him and his father is mostly people that suffered when I have crisis. So it has so much affected me in my marriage. I can't even do any business. If any money I put in any business will crumble. I can drink under one week, I can spend ten to twenty thousand dollars. Thank you, thank you. Right, so I have a son for, for her. Right, so right, I have a son for her. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When I see my son, you can you can raise your own. My, my name is Jerry uh, Cho. Because of time. Okay, yes, let's hear from the one. Because of my time. name is Jerry Cho. Sandra's my wife and my two children. Over the last five years has been hell. Has been absolute hell because of the way Sandra's behaved. With the drinking over the last five years, the more she drinks, the angrier she gets until she gets extremely violent. And the more violent she gets, the more she turns to the children. It's not, it's not even ten weeks ago that she was visiting and the people I was in Abu Dhabi and the people had to come to the house to rescue the children and take them somewhere else and hide them because of her temper and she was ripping the TVs off the walls, the flat screen TVs off the whole of the house, smashing the TVs on the ground just in temper with, with alcohol and this has been the same course for the last five years before that she had problems with alcohol but she was manageable and but in the last five years she's just turned absolutely crazy with alcohol so the difference I see in her this week is much, much different. This morning when she woke up, she was happy, she was friendly. She wasn't like before, snapping at the kids, shouting at everybody. This morning when she got up, she was happy. She ran around, got the kids dressed, bathed them, made sure everybody was okay. The kids are terrified of her. If you see these children, they're terrified of her. As soon as she drinks, they'll run away and hide. When she's sober, no problem at all, they love it a bit. But as soon as she has a drink, it's a major, major problem. So I've seen a massive, massive difference today. And she's happy, she's expressing herself, she's talking, she's happy with the kids. She came downstairs, had breakfast, which she would never ever do before, she would never ever. But now she's doing it, so thank God. Wow. Well, you listen to that. I think if uh, the law will anoint a minister of God specially for this issue, because there are many people that are in a camp for the formation, many homes, many children. What we are talking about happened to personality, children of the richest hero 
presidents, many of their children, they are in the camp because of this addicted. If I'm talking, let us see. All over the world. All over the world. There is no solution. We pray God should anoint the ministers of God that can rescue these people all over the world. Deliver them just like this, our sister has been delivered. Because when you say you are addition, addicted to drinking or whatever, the drug or whatever, you cannot go too far more than this sister. Going by what we have seen in the life of this sister, I think he has gone to extreme. Yes. Because he said he never believed he would last this year. Because he's working towards commit suicide. 70, 80 percent of people that commit suicide, this is the cause of their problem. They are tired because of all this. So can you see how God does solve this problem? Just like that. We want to say happy marriage once again, and I want to meet the family. And uh, I want to once again salute our father who just talking now. 90%, look, listen, 90% of men cannot bear what he has bared. If I may say 99%. Are you with me? Listen. Listen. Listen to me. I used to say to people that as a minister of God, issue of racism is not a color. It's not issue of color. They say, ah, this person is racist, this one is racist, this one is black, this one is white. No, it's not color. It's spirit. Spirit. Can you see what has happened between this husband and wife? It was not beer all those things. Because the woman is a black or white, but he bore it because he has good hearts. In the war, they, they will talk of ah, this is this day. It's no issue of color. It is no issue of color. It is evil spirit in, in a man, in a woman. There's nothing in color that... There's nothing in color. See what is happening between the marriage here. And I'm very sure if we were to be even a black man that married our sister here, he would not stand the pain. If I'm talking, let me see your hand. It will not stand the pain. But here, here, a brother here now that is not in Africa is still the pain. He saw her pain as, a, as his own pain. Imagine if our father here left the marriage a long time, this woman would have died. He, the woman is alive because the man is with him, with her. That is the solution. We are talking today because this man is still in the marriage. If this man have divorced long time, we will not be talking today. But he need companion like this to still stay alive here today. So tell the whole world, please stretch your hand. The issue of racism is not color. It's not color. It's not about evil spirit. It's issue of evil spirit. It's not color. It's not white. It's not black. It's not green. Thank you very much. You may be seated. You may be seated. Thank you. I want immediately after the service, the family will be the first family I want to meet. So please take them to a better place to have their service. You see? It's not, a, it's not a poor man, it's a rich man. But still, not that there is many women there that would like to settle with him, that would want to have him as a husband. But still yet, he said, no, 
I will be with this woman. And there is no more love. There is no love because the evil spirit have taken over the, the affection. But still it's true. Now he came out now. How many of our, of our, of our, our man will come out and, and stand on the, on the television a woman that have done so much and you are able to stand with him and talk to the whole world? Ah. You say, go and give your testimony. It's you that they deliver. <laughs> so, if I'm right, you tell your, please go and take your testimony. I will send the, I'll put some money to inside the envelope to your pastor. You help me thank him, give him this uh, $5,000. And uh, I'm writing a letter. Thank you, pastor. God will continue to increase your anointing. Thank you. <laughs> Son. Okay, yes. Okay, I understand what he's talking about. So, talk about that. I've experienced a lot. When why want to share the testimony of what God has done for them unless a testimony of breakthrough and breakthrough of I, I, I got a contract of three trillion dollars. The husband will come along to stand. Praise the Lord, I'm the husband of this man, this woman. Praise the Lord, I'm the husband. You have been married. Say, happy marriage is my own name. Mm -hmm. But breakthrough. But any other, look at this man. He came out. And he, he was not here. He learned what happened to the wife. And he came out to show that it's my wife. And the whole world was him. Mm. Mm. It's a lesson to you. I'm challenged. Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I'm challenged. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I'm challenged. Look at you. We have many marry and remarry. A lot of marriage has been broken in the past. Many of our women here has almost five to six husbands in the past. Many of our men has up to six, five wives in the past. And many could not settle down. What happened? What, what caused your marriage that was not up to this? Because of broken marriage, your own marriage was not up to this one, and you abandon your marriage. It was not half of what we are we 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 are hearing now, but you abandon your marriage and you went to marry go. But this is absolute extreme. You just a little you suspect something concerning your wife or a story was stare about your husband or you saw a letter in the pocket just like a divorce letter if I'm talking divorce. are you telling me that all this story are not more than those letter hmm? or your woman could not give birth. You're, you married for many years and the woman could not give birth to a baby. is he, buried. And you are God that made child. He said, I cannot stay with you. It's, it's too late now. I have to go and get married to another person. You abandon the marriage. See what's If we are to be Africa to Africa, we understand, but this is a true that challenging you. I want to leave you. Think about it again. I think my father has had a war break record. It's not record, it's war record. 
world record. What people call marriage companion was no longer there again. The companion was no longer there. Passion was not there. The love was no longer there. It's still stand by a woman because she doesn't want her to die. The love is no longer there. They are no longer lived alone. You can't, the way you say, they cannot, they cannot be to The companion, somebody beside you to advise you, is no longer there. But still, this man remains. It's not the woman that remains, man that remains. The story we are supposed to have now that, hey, I lost my husband during all this problem. My husband divorced me. But there was nothing like that. The husband still there. And that is exactly what Satan wants to achieve. If every marriage is like this, hardly we have divorce home. If I'm talking, talking, let us up your hand and let you hear. If, I mean, if every marriage is like this, hardly we have divorce home. So, I say hardly we have any divorce home again. If every marriage is like this. Hardly, you hear divorce, 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 if every marriage is like this. Rise up, rise up. Majesty. Worship majesty. Kingdom of authority, kingdom of joy. 